Hey kids, it's Dressa James, and on this Dressa James Explains, we're doing Dinosaur 101. So on Facebook, Sarah Lowe's Louisiana Austin requested a video on Dinosaur 101 for her nephew. So here we are. I will tell you this, I can't go into too much detail because at the museum I teach a dinosaur class, so I can't like cover that subject because it's kind of tied to that institution. I also do my own like trap like by demand PowerPoint presentation look lectures on this topic. So again, I can't go into that. But tonight I will go over something different where in, in which I will give you facts I don't give in that normal talk. So it's still a different thing here. That being said, let's get started. So with dinosaurs, the word dinosaur was coined in 1842 by Richard Owen in Britain. And the idea is that when we, we first found the earliest dinosaurs, well, not earliest in time, but our first understanding of dinosaurs in science, uh, they're trying to classify them by different groupings and everything. So the first breakdown within dinosauria were the hips. So we have Thoristia and Ornistia. Soristia are the predatory dinosaurs, the meat eaters, and the long necks. And those guys have, where we have our hip bones, they have the hip bones going straight up and down. And then their legs kind of come out and go down like that, like a lizard kind of going down like that. Not out like that, but just going straight like this. The Ornistia, which are the armored dinosaurs, the horned dinosaurs, and the duck bills and their relatives, they, their hip bones, instead of being up like these guys, they actually lay down like this. And the leg bones go down below that. So what's the big deal? Uh, Soristia means lizard hip, or just means bird hip. Within Soristia, we have thoropods. Now, thoropods, meaning beast foot, are essentially your predatory dinosaurs. There are a few that eat plants. The, thir the Therizinosaurus eat plants, but in general, there are these, you know, Alt T. Rex, Allosaurus, Velociraptor, Spinosaurus. Those are your thoropod dinosaurs, predatory meat eaters. Uh, so think of them as our modern equivalent of carnivora and mammals, including bears and lions and all that. Those guys. So that's Thoropoda in its own right. Then we have Sauropod Morpha. Now there's two things here. Uh, sauropod Morpha means lizard foot form. And there's two subgroups. These, the prosauropods are like platysaurs here. And these guys essentially uh, are the late Triassic, a few in the early Jurassic. They're walking like on two legs or four legs, depending on the species and, and the age of the individual. Um, so that's for the prosauropods. Then sauropods are the, long, the what you call long neck dinosaurs. So the two major branches here, and there's more than that, but you know, bear with me, are the Macronaria, the, the Brachiosaurus type. They have the long arms, short legs, big boxy heads. And then we have the Diplodocus form with the long uh, legs, short arms, and horse-like heads. Uh, and that's for the Jurassic in particular. There's Titanosaurus and the Cretaceous, but the idea is that you're seeing sauropods are these things, right? Within Ornistia, we have the first, my favorite dinosaur group name, uh, Thyria 4, it means shield bears. So your armored dinosaurs, you have Ankylosaurus and Stegosaurus, these guys here. So you know these guys, right? Uh, within the Ankylosaur group, there's actually two branches. We have Ankylosaurus here, and we have the, the uh, Edmontonia here, which is a nodosaur. So at the museum, people will see our Denversaurus, which is a type of nodosaur, and they'll say, where's his club? And it's like, well, Ankylosaurids have clubs, but nodosaurids don't. They're still in the same grouping of, of, uh, of Ankylosauria, but they're different branches in that, within that group. And again, in general, Notosaurus is a little older than Ankylosaurus, but they were up until the end, actually, before the Cretaceous period uh, ended. So in Thyria 4, we have, of course, Stegosaurus, which is a iconic, one of the top five dinosaurs. Um, do know the American Stegosaurus is unusual in that it has mainly plates and a few spines. Uh, most Stegosaurus, like in Europe and uh, in Africa, we have Tanzania, uh, sorry, Kitrosaurus in Tanzania. We have plates and spine mixture, and it has spines on the shoulders, which is kind of uh, seen more outside of America, whereas this is what this is what we see here in America. So the stegosaurs are pretty diverse too. Next group we have are called marginocephala, margin as an edge, the margin of a table, cephala as a head. So think of the horn dinosaurs in particular because they have horns and things on the edge of their head called the frill. So this is a this is a, a member of marginocephala but particularly a ceratopsian. Ceratopsian means horn face, as in triceratops, three horn face. So ceratopsians are um, a very late Cretaceous. I mean, there, there are a few early Cretaceous examples, but they're late Cretaceous mainly, uh, mainly North America and, and particularly, well, there are some in Asia, but the ones with the horns are in North America usually. And there's two branches of these guys, the Chathosaurine, which have like the big frills and, you know, and, the, and usually three horns. And the Centrosaurines, like Stracosaurus here, has like, Bigger frill, bigger frill horns and like a nose horn. There's a lot of different groups there, especially in Utah. They're finding a lot of these guys right now. Um, I'm reading my discovery every like month or so of some kind of ceratopsia of some sort. So they're very successful in the Cretaceous. Now these are ceratopsia, and you look at this guy, the Tachosaurus, who I did a video on two weeks ago, and you're like, hey, uh, that doesn't look like these things. 
Uh, and the idea is very simple. This guy, these are late Cretaceous. He's early Cretaceous. So there's a change in time. But also we define these guys by having certain like uh, like the beak they have, with their heads, uh, the, the shape of their head, and everything. And this guy has a earlier form of that. So that's why I wouldn't say it's a direct ancestor to Ceratopsians. It's like an uncle to Ceratopsians. But the idea is that it is a Ceratopsian dude, by definition. It doesn't fit in any, any other group. It fits in with, with the Ceratopsians. This is a Tachosaurus again, the parrot with her. There's a video like two weeks ago. Um, also within margin of cephala are the underappreciated Pachycephosauruses. So these guys, uh, which names me thick-headed lizard, literally, uh, they are classified within margin of cephala. You say, well, how? They're like on two legs. And that's not, that's not, that's not a... Um, qualifier because you know he's on two legs well for a certain part of his life so the idea here is that there are horns on the back of the head and again when you look at all dinosaur groups you're like well where does it fall in it falls in closest to ceratopsians but it's not a ceratopsian so that's where the name margin of cephala comes it, it incorporates these two groups so that's how that works i know it's a lot of words big words i'm sorry kids but that's the name of the game so that being said our last group are ornithropods meaning bird feet which is kind of fun because um Dinosaur footprints also like bird tracks, but then dinosaurs have reptile-like bones. So the early paleontologists were like, we find reptile bones in no reptile tracks, and then bird tracks in no bird bones. And it turns out it was the reptile tracks making the bird, sorry, reptile bones with the bird tracks, you know. Anyway, so ornithropod includes two major groups, uh, and the first are the iguanodonts. And the iguanodonts are the, I mean, they look like they're the, um, you know, the generic two-legged, quote, two-legged, Ornithopods can walk on four legs and well, four limbs, and then they run on two on average. But the iguanodonts have what I call this like the iguanodon hand. So if you ever see me do a social event or any kind of event, I do this wave like this. This is the iguanodon wave because they walk on three of the fingers like this. They have a pinky for grabbing leaves and a thumb spike for giving like thumbs up. Now, for, for probably pre fighting our predators, we don't know, but they have a thumb spike. That's why they're, you know, iguanodonts are, are, are really cool. One of my favorite dinosaur groups. But uh, the hadrosaurs or duck billed dinosaurs are commonly known. Uh, they have, they've lost the, uh, the thumb spike. So they just have like four digits. So they walk on three. And in fact, these three with, are encased in like skin, like, 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 a, like a mitten. Um, the initial thought about duck bills were that they were like water animals, since the duck, you know, uh, you know, relative, think of ducky and that before time. Um, and if, and if they would find all this extra skin here, so the assumption was it was like webbing the toes so they can swim. But better preserved specimen have shown that no, it's like, it's like a pad, and they're walking on this pad, like, like a like, kind of like a, how zebras have like a hoof, you know, or um, water beasts have the hooves. It's more together for holding weight. Uh, so that includes the uh, I use two examples here: the Parasaurolophus. Uh, this guy. There's two kinds of of, of uh, duck bill dinosaurs, and again, they don't actually. Dr. Bacher hates saying the word duck bill because they don't all have duck bills. Only a Montosaurus really does. <laughs> But anyway, the name kind of stuck in the, in the zeitgeist. But there's the ones with a crest and the ones without crest. So there's two different branches there. And again, these are ornithopods. And as far as the lifestyle goes, they live in huge herds, uh, usually migrating uh, in different areas. You know, there's a lot of interspecies interactions here. So in general, we have our dinosaurs 101, which are theropods, sauropods, thyreophore, marginocephala, and ornithopod. And then, of course, you go higher up, you have ornithia and thyristia, and higher up, you have dinosauria. So what's the big deal? Uh, people often will assume or believe that the Mosasaurus is a dinosaur. They say marine reptile. In fact, Mosasaurus, Ithiosaurus, and Plesiosaurus are not dinosaurs. Dinosaurs could swim. We, we know we have tracks of dinosaurs swimming, but we don't think that dinosaurs live in the ocean. You're like, well, Spinosaurus is aquatic. Exactly, it's aquatic. <laughs> that means he goes in and out of the water, usually fresher water. And marine reptile means you have flippers. You have given up the land, so you're, you're out there. And in fact, these guys, the Ithiosaur and Plesiosaur in one group, Mosasaurus are closely related to snakes and lizards, actually. Squamata, that, that order. Um, another group of animals that are often considered dinosaurs, which are, that are not, are the Archos other, other Archosaurus. So people say, oh, crocodiles are living dinosaurs. No, they're not. Crocodiles are not living dinosaurs. They are dinosaur cousins. They're distant cousins of dinosaurs. Um, so, I mean, technically birds are living dinosaurs more than crocodiles are. So the idea is that their arms go out to the side anyway, so they're not dinosaurs, but they are, this one, Dinosuchus, is a, co a contemporary from here in Texas, so I appreciate him. The pterosaurs, the flying reptiles who've seen here walking and here flying or gliding, um, these guys essentially are not dinosaurs either. They are um, 
flying reptiles. We have marine reptiles and flying reptiles. They are dinosaur contemporaries, meaning they live with dinosaurs. They are close cousins, uh, closer than crocodiles, actually, but they are not still dinosaurs, so they're a different branch altogether. And of course, the last thing I'm going to point out in this dinosaur one on one talk, I'm going to try to keep my videos at a certain timing. Uh, I can talk forever, but instead of talking forever, I just make more videos. Uh, we have Demetrodon here. Demetrodon is not a dinosaur. I did my first video was on Demetrodon. Do not call it a dinosaur. If anyone tells you Demetrodon's a dinosaur, they are a science heretic. You burn up the steak. It's not a dinosaur. <laughs> Why are you so passionate, James? Because I dig up the White Side Museum. We dig up Demetrodons. Duh. Now, other animals people associate with dinosaurs are the uh, saber tooth cat, the woolly mammoth, and the mastodon, which are different kinds of elephant things. Well, these guys are all mammals. They live way beyond or way past dinosaur time. And in fact, Demetrodon, fun fact, has more in common with the mammals, uh, although it's not a mammal, but has more in common with mammals than it does with the dinosaurs, uh, as far as as far as uh, evolutionary ana anatomy and connections in, in the fossil record. But anyway, so that's Dinosaur 101. Uh, there's a lot more there. And if you want me to go over individual groups more, um, certain definitions, or just continue doing each species, like comment below, let me know. Uh, just, if you like these kind of videos, like share them and subscribe because by just subscribing them, tell pe people like this and I won't be as sad. And then also uh, like because, or dislike. Let me, like, I need to know, like, do you not like me talking about the families? Am I talking too fast? Or am I, should I go over more detailed things? I don't know because I just have a lot of information in my head and I want to share it. That being said, thank you guys very much. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Bye.